Good afternoon and welcome back to Music Scrap, the musical scrapper. A uh, beautiful Monday afternoon here on the east coast of Canada. It's 15 degrees Celsius, or for my friends who live in the U.S., that is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which for us is beautiful because we've had a very cold spring so far. This is 100% cotton watercolor paper that I'm using, but it is, it's 90 pound and it started out as six by nine. So I've cut it into four by six, four by six, and then I'm left with these one by six little pieces that I'm just storing in my marker storage um, to use as test, testing for color mixing and etc. Um, it is by B Paper. So it's 90 pounds, so it's thin-ish, but it's still, it's still nice and um, a good, good quality. And um, like I said, 100% watercolor, or 100% cotton, I mean. So it is decent paper. I like to use it for cards. And these, I have quite a few. I'll see how many I get done today. I am going to try to do just some like sketchy, well, not sketchy watercolors, but landscape type watercolors. I don't really have references, so that's why you don't see a, a picture here today. I'm just going to do some. Oh, that's right, Dee Dee. They were from your museum. <laughs> Looks like I have a tattoo. <laughs> so, if you're watching the recording, thank you very much. Um, this is recorded live on Ustream.tv, so I do have some people here with me live chatting. So, if you hear me talking to people, it's not because I'm hearing people in my head. There actually are people here I'm talking to. I do have white artist tape, but at the moment it's across the room because I was using it for something and I forgot to bring it back to my desk. So I'm using my green. Ugh. Okay, sorry. Excuse the dang fruit flies. They're... Uh, attacking me from all angles at the moment. There we go. So these are going to be made into cards or added to cards. So um, some thank you cards that I need to make. So I'm going to choose some smaller and some Larger, well, not really large, medium sized brushes here. And I'm using my M Graham watercolors. So I'm starting with a palette that I have from my sunset that I did the other day so there is some oh but I have to get rid of this one moment I need to get rid of this yellow because I don't want these two yellows in my sunset I forgot I need yellow ochre so that was the error I made with that sunset was I used I used my other yellows instead of yellow ochre, so then it turns green with your blue. So I have to use yellow ochre so it doesn't turn green. And the Paula showed us these really cute um, ceramic rose-shaped dishes. I've got one on order, so it should be coming the end of, well, I don't know, Wednesday, I think it is. 
because I ordered it on the weekend, so then it doesn't usually go out until Monday. So it might arrive tomorrow, but not likely until Wednesday. So I should have it for my stream on Thursday to show you. Although I think I'm going to do some scrapbooking on Thursday because. Okay, so let's get. I am going to do a seascape sunset sunrise. I don't know which it is because I'm just going to be making it up. So it's going to be whichever you want it to be. So I need that. I need that. I need ultramarine. I need my permanent orange. I need my yellow ochre. Um, I might need a little cerulean blue as well. And I'm going to need some burnt sienna along with my ultramarine. I have a fair amount of dark there, but I still may have to mix more. So let's mix up my uh, orange. So these are four by six. And the cards I make are five by seven. And these will be added and be able to remove so that the recipient can add them into a four by six card. CB! Ah! Are you here, CB? Hi! Oh, hi, Ange! Oh, hi, you guys. Have you arrived at... at... Hi, Janet. Oh, Janet's on the... Sorry, guys. Oh, CB, how fun. Is Xandra there too? Sorry, guys. You know me, once I get started, I always forget to look at chat. And I wasn't expecting to have them appear. So that's the other reason, my other excuse. <laughs> So I am not using any reference. This is these are all just going to be coming from my brain as if I'm just doing a a sketchy practice kind of thing. And my yellow ochre. So I am going to just draw my horizon in because I like to draw, I like to draw it in even when I'm not going to draw in a whole lot of detail stuff because I like it to be straight because it's kind of important. All right, so do I want more water? Okay, so I'm going to do it like this. I think I'm going to do just this. I want it just up either above or below the center. And this pencil, I need to get a I need to get a better pencil. I need to get a nice mechanical pencil that has harder lead because that lead's too soft. So it's all. So I always end up. It's too hard, even when I use a light touch, it still comes off too dark. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to wet the sky. Easy. All right. You 
guys are all up very early over there. Still trying to get used to the time change, likely. I like to be careful with my horizon because water levels itself out. So your horizon is always going to be flat unless, you know, there are mountains. But my mountains are going to be above my horizon. So I like to try to get my... So this paper is th it's thinner than the 100 pound that I was using the other day because it's the 90 pounds. So it does wrinkle a little, but it flattens back out once you're um, drying it. No, that, no. Z-A-N-D-R-A is how she spells her name, Lena. Yeah, Z-A-N-D-R-A. N. Not M. Yeah. Okay. So is today the day that um, Jen meets you guys? I think it is. All right. So I need a paper towel. You want to make sure that your paper is wet and still glossy but not like shining and pooling. So that's about where I am right now. Oh gosh, that's not the one I want to use. <laughs> Word of matter. Um, hello, did anyone see what I did with my other, where'd it go? I know I didn't put it away. Oh, there it is, put it on the wrong side. Actually, I should have started upside down here. Whoops. Oh, it's drying a little too quickly on me. And I didn't do a very good job of getting this nice and straight here. It's not going to matter. I am putting some, uh, I am going to be putting some, uh, mountains there so that can sort that out
Now I'm going in with my um, blue and burnt sienna mixture that gives me my darker color. Oops, I should be lightening it up at the top, not the bottom. So this is water, so now I'm doing the reflections. I'm going to have to add more orange there because it's uh, ended up quite diluted, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going in with my all right so I have to dry it before I can do any more layering because it's starting to dry so if I try and do any I'm gonna get blooming oh wait a minute I think one moment Oh, I have to plug in my heat gun. Uh oh, I think I have to just a minute. It's not it's not when I can see, I have to just kind of feel it. And I think, there we go. Heat gun, I, I do have noise canceling chosen for my microphone. So I hope it does as good a job as my video camera does. Heat gun. Hi, Janet. Hey Jan, Twinster. Oh, you signed in as Twinster this time. <laughs> oh, Twinster, the ladies have signed in from Oz. 
getting their morning underway early once again not wasting any part of the day I see make sure it's Of course, it doesn't have any horizon yet, so it kind of looks a little dysfunctional yet here. And that will be my next step. I think first I'm going to do the straight horizon line as straight as I can. Oh, I think, you know what? I'll be able to do a better job, I think, if I use my, if I use my rigger. I'm getting pretty decent with my rigger brush because I want it to be nice and straight. And if I can find my silly rigger, where'd you go? One moment gotten hidden. There it is. All right. So I'm going in with my dark blue and my blue, my ultramarine and sepia mixture, but it's left on the blue side, which is my darkest blue here. I'm going in, trying to do a straight horizon line. And it's not quite straight, but okay. So now I'm going to add in my mountains. Remember, this is just from my brain. It's not, I'm not recreating anything at all. So I actually have to make use my darker one Definitely, Dee Dee. Oh, definitely. I won't say that out loud. But definitely. It's not, not like Eileen needs an excuse, but she's definitely using Janet. Oh, definitely.
for those of you watching the recording, three of our friends in a box, we call each other Fibs, have made the trek to Australia. And today they get to meet up with Ozagran Jen. Jen. So that is exciting. Of course, Jen was the one who traveled to the U.S. and Toronto. She also made a stop in Toronto last year, about the same time. So what do you guys think? I'm not really happy with the sky up there. I, mean, I have to do something, I think. I'm not happy with the sky right here. I'm going to go in and see if I can maybe pick up a little bit of that blue, maybe. Maybe I just have to make it darker too. I don't know. I don't know if I need to make it lighter or if I need to make it darker. I think I need to make it darker. I don't know why I keep putting that one over on that side. I think, I think it has to go to the darker color. Yeah, I think that's a little better. I think that blue was just too bright like that. I think, And I need to get this dark cloud into my reflection here. A little bit more. Okay, hold on. I totally lost the shape of that brush. Okay. So I added, put the color down. And now I'm going back in with a damp but clean brush on both edges to feather it out. Okay, so I think I like that. Bye, Dee Dee! Thanks! I, I kind of like how that turned out. Trying to need decide if it needs a shoreline before I take my tape off. It may need a shoreline here, or it could be someone out in the middle of the water. I like it like it is. I don't want to ruin it. I love the water. Not, still not totally happy with the sky there, but <clears throat> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna wet that again. I'm just gonna try and fix my sky still. I'm still not happy with this guy there. I need to add more dark. There. He got that. In a second.
Bye, Sophia. Okay. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Let's take off the. Believe me, it'll look much better once I get rid of this green tape. Because it's very distracting from the picture, which is why the white painter's tape is nice. But anyway, I just ignore the green. Always tear your tape away and at an angle so it doesn't pull apart your... So, there's number one done. I've got a lot to do, a lot of them to do, which is why I'm doing quick landscapey ones because I've got like 30 of these to do. So, <laughs> I don't think I'll get them all done today. Number one. So these are all four by sixes. If you came in late, making them for cards, I have to be stop being president of Club Bam for a while because I need to get some thank you cards mailed out. Thanks, Joan. I finished binge watching three seasons of the original CSI because I stopped watching it when William Peterson left Grissom because they replaced him with um, Lawrence Fishbone or Fish anyway and I did not like him at all so I stopped watching it so I went back and watched from where Ted Danson, the last three seasons when Ted Danson took over. So I binge watched those this week. Three seasons of CSI. Because I'm still at the point where I need to just keep my brain not thinking. Oh yes, Z, I hope your legs hold out for you. I know I couldn't do it right now. I'm hoping I get my first injections on April 30th. As long as my legs stay clear of infection, which they are, thank goodness. And um, once that happens, I'm hoping I will be a little better for physiotherapy and get getting my walking and my exercise going because now that I've seen the surgeon and she will do redo my knees for me but I need to get into some shape first before she'll put me on the list so that I can do no problem and I will do it now that I have a goal it's I can see that 
She'll do it. Hey, Marie! Hello! Nice to see you. Oh, would help if I used my ruler the correct way. So I'm going to make another one similar to similar to that some of them are going to have to be the, the same similar bye bye Ange. safe driving pay attention no phone All right, so this time I'm not going to use any of the lighter. I'm only going to use the dark blue because I liked that. Actually, I may use some light underneath, but I'm going to use more of the dark. I need to mix more of my dark, which is my ultramarine. And I've got two of these dark mixes, the ultramarine, one that's still blue, you adding burnt sienna but still leaving it as dark blue and then one with a little more burnt sienna in it making it more towards the actual black neutral so I need to mix more of that dark as well Sienna. Oh, darn it. Okay, let's see if those are different enough. So I'm going to use one of these small pieces of oh, paper that just all fell out and jumped at me. This is left over from when I cut down my six by nine to two four by sixes so I'm left with this inch okay so this is the darker one okay see so that makes a nice black and let's hope I didn't put too much burnt sienna in this one hope it still stayed blue no I have to add a little more ultramarine back into that one I use too much burnt sienna I want it to be a dark blue because I don't have in my M grams, I don't have a Payne's Gray, so I'm mixing it using Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. Keeping it on the blue side makes it like a Payne's Gray. There we go. All right, so now I've got a lovely dark blue and, and a black, a lovely a nice bright black. That's why I like about mixing black instead of using pre tube black. I don't own any tube black watercolors. No pollen tonight. Woohoo, Marie. Have you finished your season? Your playoffs and stuff? Yes, everybody needs to go follow Lena. Definitely. She's a newbie, Miss. I won't say it on on the recording what her Twitter is, but please do go follow her. She is over in Copenhagen. Oh, before I continue with that, I do need to mix. I need to mix more yellow and orange, too. Gosh.
make a few of these so I'm going to I've got a lot of orange still on that brush so I'm gonna actually spritz over top of my brush so I don't waste it all right let's get some yellow ochre mixed here I think I need to spritz it again oh no I see I was just missing the spot that was wet that's all got a little well down there that's kind of wet Never paint directly with these, with your artist quality watercolor paints. You don't have to paint directly. Even your darkest coat, you should do a little bit of a thick mix. It's the difference when you're mixing your watercolor. If you want a very light, here's how I think of it. And I learned this on a class I was taking, it's not, it's not me this is from like a class I would took when for your first light layers think of mixing your paint like skim milk or almost like water right okay so very very runny um, with your next layer when you're building more color then you want it to be kind of more like a, a whole milk consistency and then when you want to do a very bright, detailed layer, then you mix it so that it's like heavy cream consistency. But always go in and mix it with your water. And do your layers. Okay. Now I can go in and wet my paper. Didn't use any red in that last one. Maybe I need to add a little red this time. Mmm, before the dark blue. Let's get a little lizard, lizard and crimson in there this time. Let's mix that up. Add a little more in there. Lizard and crimson. So that's how I'll make this one slightly different by adding, well, it's going to be a little different anyway, because it's so I've got it upside down this time. So I'll start with my yellow, work my way to the blue. So I'm not sure if this is a sunrise or sunset. It can be whichever you want it to be. I'm going to go back in with my encourage some blending here.
I'm going to turn it up. So now it's going to encourage that lizard and crimson down into the orange because I've changed the direction. And now with my blue at the top. Now I have to actually, it shouldn't really go from that yellow to the crimson, so I just need to do a little orange in there. Oh, sorry, Marie, these are my M. Graham watercolors. Love them. Love, love, love them. Going back in with a clean brush to encourage this blending here in the water. Bye, you guys. Have fun. Have fun. We're all jealous. Just so you know. But have fun anyway. Okay. 
Oh, don't like that at all, Jean. Hold on, I need to, I need to go ahead and dry this before I continue and mess it up. Heat gun. Yay! Dr. Dot's done braiding her cord. Woo! And I'm going to go in with my flat brush here and I'm going to go in with my thinner brush here and I'm going to go in with a darker version of these colors to kind of do the water. I don't have quite enough blue here in my water. So going with my clean brush to encourage some blending. There we go. Let's keep going.
All right, now for the horizon. Let's see, what will I do for the horizon? I think I might just do one side. Oh, right, I want to use my... Make sure your brushes, bristles are wet before you try and put ink on them. It has to be... do is start with a higher mountain there. I'm gonna make it look maybe like that there's a building over there or something. As they get further away, they have to get lighter, so I'm just letting my paint wear off my brush for that shoreline there. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, Twinster, your evil Twinster was here, silly girl. Lima, Lady True North is Jan, J-A-E-N. Also known as my twinster since I'm J-E-A-N. And she's J-A-E-N. We call each other twinster. So this time I'm trying to make my um, water look a little bit more, not rough, but not as calm as the other one by making the um, reflections of my land here a little bit rougher or not as clearly stated. And that just helps give the illusion that your water is a little less calm. Alright, this time I'm going to do a bit of a, just a bit of a shoreline here as well. Not sure this is dark enough, but we'll see. I may have to do a second coat.
heat gun. <clears throat> so once again, no reference photos for these. They're just coming from my brain. Thanks, Kimberly. Thanks, Joan. Now I think I'm all twisted up in my wire for my microphone. I think I need to roll it up just a little bit because it's, it's too short without the extension and it's way too long with the extension. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, the, hold on. It didn't dry totally. I need to dry it before I can remove the tape. This bottom corner did not dry. Heat gun. Okay, I actually have to add something here along my edge. So... Otherwise, it's not going to look like land. Actually, I think I need to make it... I need to do one more layer of the dark. <clears throat> so let me do one more layer of the dark and dry it. And then I need to add just a little bit of... Um, sea foam so that you can tell that it's like the waves coming into the shore so that it doesn't just look like sky reflections so you can actually tell that that's seashore oh my tape is coming up on me it's the heat gun doing that Thanks, Mindy. Now, Eileen, be nice. Thanks, Helen. Ha, ah, thanks, Dar. I try. Now I'm going to go in with my little, um, I have an old uh, kind of stiff little brush here that I'm going to wet the bristles of and I think I need a new piece of paper towel because there's no clean spot on it. I ran out of tissues. Usually I use tissues. So I'm going to go in with my clean, wet bristles here. And I'm just going to go along this shoreline and try and pull out to white. You can also use white. And I may have to go in and use white. We'll see if I get enough pulled up or not. There we go.
just trying to make a more bit of a line there. See if I can get some white on there. My white's got a little bit of green in it. A little bit of yellow. I have to kind of clean it a little bit. Oops. Oh, didn't mean to put that in my, put that in the wand. Wrong water. I put it in my clean water. Is this the night Ella streams? Is this like the third? So now I'm just going in with this brush and doing, trying to make it look like a foam there. I'm just pulling it up a little bit, trying to kind of make it look like it's splashing up against the rocks of the shore. That's a nice old stiff brush. It kind of got ruined and went hard. So I kind of use it for this kind of technique when I just need to add in some. <clears throat> Bye, Bran. Thank you. <laughs> Kill that fruit fly with my heat gun. Jeesh. Okay, so there we go. And you can see how much depth it adds and the difference it makes adding the red in. Not that one is right compared to the other, it's just different. Adding that red, I really like the red added in actually, to tell you the truth. Okay, now I'm going to do one for something a little bit different. I have to do more seascapes, but. I'm going to do some that are just land to add, some, get some green put in. And they're going to be daytime. Thanks. Just a minute. I think I can probably even zoom in a little more. Let me see here.
I mean, I don't know. Has she ever been known to disagree, though? I mean... It's kind of like she has to sign, she also has to sign any laws. We have, a, in Canada, we have governor generals and lieutenant generals for each, governor general is for, it's federal, and each province has a lieutenant, lieutenant governor, and they are the queen's representative to our Canadian government, and they have to bring any laws that are being signed in the governor, federal ones, the governor general and the lieutenant governor has to bring those to the queen for approval. Because we're still part of the Commonwealth, that has to happen. Not that she's ever been known to not agree and sign, but it's an official thing. I've heard James and Philip, they said that first that with the uh, first baby too. Of course, Philip is the grandfather, so. The Knights of the Round Table, Arthur. We are talking about the new, it is, uh, today is Monday and is the birth of the new prince over in the UK, Kate and William's baby. Poor Kate, all three. She had hyper, n n however you say it, severe, uh, I don't like the way the Manny Cam zooms in. It doesn't zoom. It doesn't zoom like my other one zooms, but the other zoom doesn't work. Ugh, it's really weird. What happens? Okay. All right. So I have to mix my colors. I don't know why I keep laying this one on this wrong side of my desk there. Okay, let's see. I need my greens. And I'm going to add cerulean blue because I like cerulean blue for my day skies. I sometimes add a little ultramarine, but we'll see. And... I'll do this one more and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make the cards that they will attach to. Hmm. Okay, so. Hmm. Hmm. 
trying to think. I need to, <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. All right, I need to mix my greens. That's what I was doing. That's what I was doing. Okay, so my light green permanent and my sap green. So my light green, that's my cerulean blue, my light green permanent. And my sap green. Then I also need my light violet. I cannot remember. I think it is just light violet. I can't remember the name of it because I like to use a little bit of that with some of my cerulean for my distant mountains. And I'm going to need some burnt umber because I mix that with my fat green for my tree evergreen trees. Mm -mm. All right. And so if I ever ha if I have to mix any dark blue, I will I uh, will use the two colors in this palette. I'll use the cerulean and my burnt umber instead of All right, need to draw my horizon line. Let's see, I want to do more mountains, so I'm going to do and then I'm going to just draw my furthest most mountains. Oops, that's a little bit too much of a curve in the road there, Jean. A little too much. That's going to cause an accident. Okay. Hey, Ange. Welcome back. Got to make sure this is clean if I'm going to use it to do my sky here. So this is going to be, so Angie missed my second. There's my first two 
These are my two cards I did. There's this one. You probably saw that one. And then this is my second one. All right. Thanks, Ange. I really like how the second one turned out, too. I really like the addition of the, the uh, red, the uh, lizard and crimson in the sky. Just adds a whole lot more depth. Now I have to go along my... Uh, I've got my water's pooling just a little bit there. So you need to pick it up. Else it's going to cause it to bloom if there's too much water in that spot. But I still need to add a little more at the top because it's not evenly wet. You want to try and keep it evenly wet. Now I may have too much again, but that's okay. I can always wait a little bit. Okay. In I come. So I'm doing very kind of light strokes here to just kind of lightly move the paint around so that the sky doesn't become too uh, I want it to have a little texture. Even though today our sky had no texture, it was just complete solid blue. In your painting, you want to have your sky have texture. And it needs to be a little darker at the top. Because as you go farther away, which is the horizon is the furthest away from you. And it, so it needs to be lighter to give that distance. So I'm just adding a little more color there to the top and guiding it with a light touch of wispiness. And I'm going to twist up a very small piece here of paper towel. So I want a few clouds, but I don't want them to be huge because it's a very small painting. So I don't want it to be a great big huge cloud. I just want them to be nice white poofy clouds. So that it doesn't look like rain's coming in. I just want it to look like a nice summer day. Just to add in a little bit of texture.
And if you want some brighter areas, make sure you go to a clean piece of paper towel to get some brighter white areas pulled out. But keep some as a lighter blue too. The, the water, it's still all wet, so it's going to move in a little bit as I pull it. I want this spot to get bright white, so I'm just going to go back in and pull a little more there. Oops, I didn't quite get the shape I wanted. That's okay. I'll fix it. There we go. You're not quite seeing it there. Now you're seeing it straight on. So you can see the shape of the clouds a little bit better there in that shot. Yes, Joan is Minky and Crafterholic. <laughs> For some reason, when she signs in to me, it always puts her as her Crafterholic sign in. She can go in and change it, though, in the chat if she wants to, but she doesn't because she likes to trick Ange. <laughs> just to trick you, Ange, I'm sure. I'm sure that's why she does it, just to trick you. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Oh my goodness, really, Eileen? Oh, for goodness sakes. So there's my nice, my nice summer sky. Lots of lovely cloud texture there. I love it. I really like how I, my, my, my nice cloudy sky days always turn out nice. I always like that. Okay. Once again, no reference photo, just from my brain here. Just want to practice some landscapes, not trying to make it look like any place in particular. All right, so going in wet and dry, adding some purple for my distant hills. I like to use, some people use blue. I like to use purple because it just makes a more distinct difference with the sky. I guess that's why I like to use the purple. Okay, I'm going to go in with my smaller detail number two brush here. It's not a detail brush, but it's a much smaller brush. And I'm going to go in with another, while it's still wet, with some more purple to add some texture. Oh, well, not quite that much, Jean. Okay, hello. You can always fix it. You can fix it. You can always fix it. With a little water, a little paper towel, and your brush. As long as you don't wait too long, it can be fixed.
Now I'll get a. Uh, I'll get the line between those two mountains. Okay, I need to dry that little area there. Gosh darn it. Where's my... Here we go. Now I'm going to go in with my rigger and my purple. Make sure your brushes are wet before you go into your paint. Number two again. Now I'm going to make a very, very light wash, lots of water, and just a teeny bit of cerulean blue to do a second layer over that darker blue. Uh, And a little bit of green. <clears throat> Very little bit of blue. And of my sap green. Okay, so it's very watery. Right, mostly water. I'm trying to get, what I want is this sap green, but with like a blue haze in it, is what I'm looking for. I don't really want it to be teal. I do want it to be green, but just with the blue haze. There we go. Okay. And now I'm going to do a wash, and it's going to be very light wash, so it's still going to have that, oh. Make sure you don't have any drops on your barrel. It's going to come in and right, make sure it's dry. Oh, I hope I have enough color in it. All right. So this very front one, okay, I don't have enough green in it. So I'm going to take some of that up on here. All right, it's too watery to go over my purple. So I'm taking some up on here and I'm going to carefully add a little bit more of that green. There we go. So what I'm trying to do is just add a green cast to that so it's starting to look green. So let's try a little more of that. There we go. I went in with some regular just of the sap green and that's going to do the trick. There we go. So now I've got from purple and I think I need a little wee bit of blue over that. Okay. 
to green and now I can go to my sap green oh, sorry guys I'm turning it sideways but it's kind of how I have to work so I'm going to my sap green here for this next closest set of mountains. You want layers. No detail yet. The closer mountains will get some detail. They will get some trees. This one I'm doing now will get some trees eventually. Right now I'm just adding my colors. And my permanent green, which is a little bit bright, so I will have to do add some yellow ochre to it kind of it's not really a very nature color but the yellow ochre will kind of subdue it some but the it gives you the lightness there I think I want that one to be Okay, and now I'm going to go right in with that still wet. Oh, darn it. I put that in my clean water, which is not very clean anymore. It'll work. All right, so I'm going into my yellow ochre. And I'm just going to kind of add that right in here and too much. I'm just going to take it off my brush and I'm just going to use that by spreading it. All right, so see how that kind of takes it down to a little bit of a more natural green color kind of a spring the grass is not quite green yet color I think I'll add I'll probably add some okay don't worry some more sap green will be added to that So now I'm going to take, I'm going to do my road next while those mountains are drying. All right, bye Marie. Thanks for dropping in. Rest well. All right, so I'm going in with, oh, forgot what I was doing. I'm doing my road, so I'm going in with my burnt umber. I'm going to wet my road. So I'm doing wet on wet. It's country road, so it's going to be dirt, a dirt road. Going off into the mountains. an umber start light it's always easy it's easy to do a second layer if you need more color it's harder to take it away and I learned that the hard way yes I did one of those lessons you learn Heat gun. Now remember, this is just my my first layer on the mountains, right? It's not 
There'll be a little bit more detail added as I go here. So now for the grass area is going to be just my sap green. For my first layer anyway. And I'm going to make it go al along the way the road is going. So oh, that's my dirty water, Jean. Not your clean, but oh well. It's the ground, so I guess it can be dirty, eh? This one you want to be a little, little darker because it's closer. I'm better at water landscapes, landscapes with water. All right, now I can go back and I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get a very fine detail brush so I can add, and I need to make my sap green a little thicker. All right, when I say fine detail brush, I mean fine detail brush. And it is a, it's my Da Vinci 3, 5.0 something. I don't know what it's considered. Five, five zeros. So like size zero, 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 zero. Okay. And yes, sorry. I need to make my, this is one case where I'm going to go right into my palette, into my um, sap green, which is wet. So there is kind of a pool, but I want to have a nice thick green to do my trees here. So this is the case when I am going to go in, but my brush is wet, so it's like a very thick, like creamy texture, okay, because it's been spritzed, but no other water added to it. So that I can go in and... So I'm not trying to draw trees. I'm just trying to put in essence of trees. It's 
still have to make sure your brush is wet or the paint won't leave your brush. It's going to want to stay on the brush. Remember, I want these hills to be off way off in the distance, so I don't want to draw trees. Okay, I'm just going to put some dark shapes in. The eye will fill in the rest. And as I get closer here, they're going to look a little bit more like trees, be a little bit bigger. Keep your brush wet or it won't release your paint. I'm going to do kind of like a hedge along here. So I want it to look like a hedge. So I'm going to kind of make it all kind of like the same height. Okay. And I'm just going to add a couple of other bushes in here. I need to just finish drying that forward grass here so I can do another layer there. Oh, oh Eileen. Gosh. Oh, my right eyes drive me crazy with allergies. I don't know why today. Okay. So let's work a little bit on my close up. I need another layer of just the green. So I am going to do that now. And I'm going to do wet on dry. So I'm going to add a layer. 
and then pull it down, moving. So once again, this is just going to be another layer of um, wash before I add some grasses and stuff for detail. Just trying to get a little bit more color down. There we go. Okay, heat gun again. All right, I need to add a little more, a little more color to that road, but I don't want to, uh, I want to be careful because I don't want it a whole lot darker than that, but I do want a little more color on it. Now, let's get to work on the grassy area so that it looks a little bit more like a field. I am going to use my, uh, here it is, my fan brush here. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to fan out bristles and I'm going to take a different brush and I'm going to take my thicker green Let's use both hands, Jean.
Hold on. I don't know if I can fix that or not. Um, I think I just need to add a little water and Need to wet it a little more. Make sure it's splayed. All right, so I think I'm gonna have to. This is this side didn't end up quite random enough because I kind of made my lines too long. That's okay. I'm gonna go in with some yellow ochre. Pull some back out. I don't know if I like this. I really like my, I think I like my seascapes way better. This just did not do what I want it to. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I'm going to try. <clears throat> Thanks, Lena. So I've got one more thing I'm going to add here. And that is a fence. So. So now I need my small flat brush that I was using the other night. Where is it? There's one of them, but it's not really the one I was looking for, but it'll work. There it is. All right. So I need my dark, I need my burnt umber, but I need it kind of thick for this. So I'm just going right into it like I did with the, uh, it does have to be misted again though. So my burnt umber, not burnt sienna, and I'm making it nice, nice and thick up here on top of my palette. So I can go in and do the 
fence posts. Of course, you got to make them smaller and closer together as they're getting further away. To help show the distance. Ooh, ooh, that did not work at all. I need to try to remove that one. I'm going to oh, totally mess that up. One moment, please. I try and fix it, but I'm probably going to make more of a mess than fixing it. Oh. <laughs> Good thing I'm not going to need much more water because I just messed, totally messed up my water. All right, I'm going to dry that spot so I can fix it. Hold on. Okay, I need a little more burnt amber here. Now to my rigger and my nice thick burnt umber. A lighter touch, farther away you go. Try and make those lines thinner. Oops, 
Jean. You're not using your rigor properly. Behave. So I'm coming back and I'm putting another, trying to do another line right beside that line. I think I need to get more paint on my brush. I think that's the problem. Because it's not going on smoothly enough. There we go. All right, I didn't have enough paint on my brush. That's why it wasn't going down properly the way I wanted it to. Okay. So now I'm going to go in with my rigger and some more of the, I just want to delineate this horizon a little bit more. I like the I like the sky. All right, I'm just gonna make sure it's dry before I peel my tape off. This is this is a really weird angle because of the way the camera is when I zoomed in. Thanks, Helen. Uh oh, and just hungry. I am getting a little hungry. I think I'll probably just have some veggies put on some green beans or something and piece of ham maybe for some protein all right okay let's peel off the tape it'll be much better once i peel off the tape all right and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to create the card that it will go on to you. There we go. It's hard for you guys to see. Oh, there, when I hold it like this, you can see the furthest mountain there. All 
I could do a little bit more um, with the road here. Let me see. Let's just add a little texture. So I'm just going in with the burnt umber and just uh, just going to make some like streaks in that road so it doesn't look Just a little essence of detail there. It's a little better. Oh, excuse me. Thanks, Dr. Dot. Thanks, Lena. Thanks, Dar. Thanks, Eileen. Oh, sorry. I was off screen a little bit. All right. So, now to show you how I'm going to make. So, there's that one. This one's my favorite. Love this one. I'm going to be making more like this. These are for, th they're going out as, with thank you cards, so. I will be signing them. So these are four by six. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna making, I'll be making the cards five by sevens. And I use my, oh, that one's messed up. I, want to, I don't really want to use cream, but I will for demonstration purposes because I don't have any of my colored cardstock here. I have lots of yellow and green and brown cardstocks, but I don't have any right on me. So let me move my setup here. <clears throat> and get my trimmer out. So since those are up on the ledge until they're dry and ready to go back in the to be five by seven so it needs to be cut here at seven so I need to take off an inch and a half because I can't go any smaller than four by six for my painting so I just can't do it because of my eyes and so then it has to be ten this way so I take off an inch this way So this is 110 pound cardstock from Staples. Some of them actually I may use black. I might use my 110 pound Michaels black and my 110 pound Michaels white. It's much heavier than the 110 pound from um, from Staples because it has more GSM. And not all 110 pound is made equal, just so you guys know. GSM makes a big... Oh. Okay, how come you will not go in? What is in the way? I don't know, so I'll put it over here. <laughs> then... And granted, I'll cut these all at the same time so I don't have to keep getting in and out and in and out. This is just to show you. Oh, I must have spilled coffee. Didn't realize it got on my... Okay. Sorry. So this is by seven, so it's this way. It needs to be scored at five. Five. 
And of course I have my envelope maker that I make my own envelopes with. So whatever size card I make. And so then what I'll do What I will be doing is I will make photo corners or else I'll make a frame. No, photo corners, probably. I've got lots of really great patterns for photo corners. So I will make uh, photo corners and stick this in the photo corners on the front so that it can be removed and used so that oh gosh sorry i don't even have see i don't i don't like the way this zooms with many cam so i'm gonna have to change some things about this and some other things not anyway so there is how it goes and it'll have photo corners so it can be taken off the card by the recipient and you know they can display it in a four by six frame if they want or or add it to a a binder so thanks eileen so Thanks, you guys. So I am going to sign off. It is quarter to eight. I'm going to stop the recording. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming. If you watch the recording, thanks a lot.